Hello, welcome to GeoAI tutorial number 25. In this video, I'm going to show you how to load a model checkpoint to regime training. So basically, if you have trained the model for a while and something happened that it was interrupted, you don't have to start from scratch to train the model. You can load the existing model checkpoint to continue the training so you can save some time or you might be downloading the model checkpoints from somewhere and you can use that one as the kind of the um baseline to st continue the training rather than having to start from scratch this can save you a lot of time and in the previous videos uh, we have covered uh, a variety of topics from uh, creating day training data and also how to train the model from scratch but uh, in today's video i'm going to show you step by step how you can load the model checkpoint so you can see from here this is the uh, yellow line initially it will change and then after that we can just load the model checkpoint and then we continue the training so you can see the orange color here so basically this is the uh, loss you can see it's training continuously and also you can look, uh, take a look at the um, iou to see how it actually performs so you don't have to start from scratch to start the, to do the training and to follow this tutorial you need to go to the open goai uh, uh, website and then examples scroll down to find low model checkpoint here click this one and you can download this to your computer or you can open this one in google Colab. So make sure that you use um gpu so you need to change the runtime and then select t4 gpu from there uncomma and then you should be able to install and uh, uh, follow through so i'm going to start from very beginning here we're going to import the library so let me zoom in a little bit here i'm going to import the library and then let me see if you can zoom in a little bit so import the library and then we're going to uh, point to the two sample data set so we have the usda and let me see um the training and also have the building uh, data set and also we're going to have a testing data set so just run this and then we're going to just import uh download the data to our computer so just use the download file function you should be able to download this to a computer after that uh, we need to create the training data so we're going to use this function export geotiff tiles all we're doing is basically subdivide the uh, image into image pair so you have one imagery and you have the corresponding uh, mass you can specify the sample size the stripe basically is the moving window the overlap so uh, you can specify for example 256 or 128 uh, depends on what you want so i'm going just to run this one as the default and as you can see it's basically subdividing your images so this is image tiling uh, to creating the image chip so in total we have 36 image chips and also you can see how many number of pixels so for each tile with features that means uh, if there's a building in there or not so basically in the mask if there's a building so you're going to count is uh, uh ties with features so one percent so basically means every image they at least have some buildings in there with that now we can start uh training the model so what we are going to do is just to call this function train segmentation model then you can specify the input so if you see uh, we have exported the data so checkpoint test and this is basically what it looks like after creating image chip so we have the images 36 images and we also have the corresponding labels uh, 36 um, mask and with that now we can start doing the training so basically we are going to use this image directory 36 images uh, as the input images and then we also have the 36 labels when we are showing the output is going to generate the initial training up, a mo uh, output model here and let me run it uh, so you can see it's actually start doing the training so we only train maybe uh, 10 epochs so the base size you can increase this one you have if you have more um uh, resources so for here we're just going to oops not sure why it's a little bit too small here uh anyway so we're going to use the unit architecture and also use the resnet 34 as the encoder to extract the features and then use the image net as the uh training weight uh the pre-chain weight so we have three channels so rgb also we're going to have two classes basically it's building non-building and then the base size is how many images you want to fit into the model training at one time and we have four images and then training for 10 epochs save the base only save to force that means you're going to save the history uh, also other stuff so if you click this one now you should see this is the result so the base model uh, for every 10 epochs it's going to save uh, that so you for example if you train for 100 epochs then you're going to have 10 20 30 40 something like that the final model is the last one so it'll be the epoch uh, 100 for example if you train 100 times so in this case we only train for 10 epochs and we see from this one 
And after that, you also have the training history. So this is the one where you can you use to do the plotting that after we finish the training, we can plot the graph. And also the um, summary is going to show you, for example, uh, when was completed, the architecture, how many epochs, and also the IOU, the dice, and the, the loss. So basically give you some basic information. You should also see this one, the, the train curve. So this is the one that actually at the end is going to show you. Um, and so we have uh, basically we train for 10 times initially. And let me, let me, okay. So once you have this, now we can take a look at the uh, result here. So we already finished 10 training, the 10 uh, epochs here. And the final IOU is 0 0.90. So it's not too bad. Um, in reality, you, you usually want to train a little bit longer, maybe 30, 40 times. Um, right now uh, to save time we only train for uh, 10 times okay so once we do that we can actually start doing the um uh, running the inference so if you want you can just directly run the inference on data but we are going to basically continue the training because we already have the basically the model uh, checkpoint from here base and also the final and also the um, checkpoint epoch number 10 so we have this we can actually continue the training for example 10 times the result is not very good we want to improve it so we can continue the training. So what we want to do is to uh, resume the model checkpoint because this is the one from here. So we train for 10 times and we're going to use this one to continue training. So we're just pointing to this file pass to check if it exists. If it exists, you're going to print out the uh, message here. If it doesn't, you're going to throw an error. So that means, okay, right now this model checkpoint epoch 10, it exists. Okay, so we said now we can resume the training. And it's the same as the previous function change segmentation model here. You, you see it's the same function. The only thing that's different is now we are specifying the checkpoint pass. So if you don't know, you can uh, shift tab on your keyboard. You should be able to see all the uh, uh, help documentation uh, shift tab here. And you should be able to scroll down and find this one, model. Checkpoint pass and also whether to resume training or not by default is false. Um, if you don't resume the training, it was just loading the um, width. Um, so if you if you use the same model, the same architecture, so you can probably just resume the training. So it's going to be uh, much faster, uh, basically converts to get much better result. Also, do you want to plot the curve or not? To plot the curve basically means you're going to show you the comparison between different um, training, bigger initial one, and then the resume training. So after I set these parameters, now this continues. So you see we're going to change um, 20 epochs. So it's going to resume from 10 and then we're going to change 20 epochs. So uh, let's take it one. Hopefully it's not taking too long. So epoch 10, epoch 11, uh, because we are feeding how many images here? Uh, base is also four. So you can see right now because we are resume the uh, epoch. So we set the uh, verbals here to two, save only. Yeah, so now we finish uh, 20 epochs. Oh, actually, 20 epochs is total. So we have 10 epochs already trained already. So you're going to train another 10 epochs. So in total, we have 20. And now you see the validation IOU, it does increase a little bit. So from 0 0.89 to 0.93. So it does increase uh, substantially. I think there's something. Uh, it's supposed to plot the graph. Anyway, I'll show you later. So this wants to show you the graph, but uh, we can compare the data. And um, all, so you can see right now, if you uh, go to the folder, you will see the, another folder called regime training. So this would be the one that uh, another 10 epoch that we change. So, and then we can do the comparison. So besides uh, the regime training, you can also set this one to force. That means you just loading the weight. You don't want to resume the training state. Uh, this is also an option uh, if you especially if you're training a different architecture other stuff you might want to just load in the weight rather than resume the training but in this case we are using the same architecture same encoder so it's okay to just resume the uh, um, regime training so you can set to force if this needed but so in this case we're just going to start from scratch so 15 epochs they means going to start from 15. earlier we in the previous example we said 20 because we already train for 10 epochs so you go to train another 10 epochs in this case we don't resume the training so if you specify 15 then you're going to train for 15 epochs so we are almost there and as you can see it starts from the scratch so 0.85 then um, get the final result 0.92 uh, it's not too bad 
The reason that you get pretty high accuracy at the beginning is because we use the image net uh, pre-chain weight, so it's already kind of a chain, so uh, you get a pretty good start. And so once we finished all that, then we can basically load the base model for training. So what we are going to use, actually use the previous one, so resume training from here, and there's a base model.pts. So this will be the one that we can use to run the inference. So this one in total have uh, been trained for 20 April, right? 10 from the initial one and another 10 after we resume training. So with this, now we can specify the path and also you can specify where you want to output the, um, the imagery. So the test prediction, so we're going to run the inference using a semantic segmentation, the input path, everything should uh, remain the same in here. So if there's one, it should be pretty quick. So the result have been saved to checkpoint test and then test prediction. So if I go back to here and you should be to find this one uh, directly from here, you can visualize it if you want to uh, together. So maybe let me show you quickly here if you want to visualize that. So I'm just going to type um, me here. You'll be geo AI, uh, geo AI dot view raster, okay, and then you can just shift tab to see the information. So we're going to basically visualize the uh, prediction. So be the mass pass, and then also the uh, a test raster pass. So let me see here, mass pass, and then you need to specify basically the uh, base map. So the base map will be what you want to have beneath the mask so this one will be the test um you can just test raster url it should be fine and then um you can also specify the node data so in general the image is going to be a, bi a binary mask so this just one this one and see if it works okay so you see now we have this all um the white color so these are basically represent the buildings and the background is the imagery the usd name imagery that we use for doing the testing it's not perfect because we only trained 20 airports and uh, but in general you can see it's pretty decent it was able to actually um detect all the buildings but in, in reality usually you want to train a lot more so that they get better results and so with that now we can compare the training history so if you want we have uh three different types of uh, model checkpoints let me so we have three different model checkpoints right so we have the initial training and we resume the training we also change the model just loading the weight with now continuous uh, uh, resume the training state so we have three model checkpoints uh, especially three training history and with that we can double check so all of them together here so you're going to load the model checkpoint and those are going to tell you how many epochs in there so initially we have 10 and then we change another 10 have a total of 20 epochs and after that we also load just load the model checkpoint we now resume the training state we train for 15 epochs and with that, now we can plot all of them. This looks quite complicated, but it's just basically uh, getting the model history and the parameters um, in there, the matrix in there, and then just plot them all together. So I maybe just incorporate this one into a package. But anyway, so this will be the final outcome that you can see from this one. So right now, we the first one is the loss. The second one is the uh, validation IOU and also the validation dice. So the blue one is the initial uh, epochs. So we have 10 epochs. So you can see at the, at the beginning, the loss is pretty high because you're just getting started and uh, you're going to have relatively uh, high loss and slowly it's going to decrease. So this is the trend you want to see. And we train for 10 epochs. You see it's decreasing. And after 10 epochs uh, for the um, orange line here, so this is the one we resume the training. So we're going to show you where you resume 10 epochs and you continue to decrease the loss. The other one is the weight. So uh, we train basically for 15 epochs, we load the training weight. So you can see the starting point, the loss is already pretty high. And then it's going to continue the training and then decrease a little bit. So eventually these two should look pretty similar. If you move to the validation IOU, it looks pretty much similar. But you can see the training, training weight here fluctuate quite a bit uh, because it's only trained for 15 epochs, not regime training, just loading the weight. And so in general, the orange line here is uh, getting better result because it train not only regime the training, but also loading the weight. So it's a combination of two and it's getting better. And the validation dice is kind of similar. Um, and yeah, so this is how you can load an, exist, an existing model checkpoint to resume training or you can just load the weight 
And this can be particularly uh, helpful if you're training a large model and took a while and sometimes something stopped um, suddenly. If you uh, set this parameter, save base model only to force, you should be able to um, basically save all the every attendee or something like that. So, and this is the one you need to specify. Uh, let me go scrap here. It will be this parameter, save base only to force. That means you want to save the checkpoint every 10 epoch so it should be um saving some time if something happened then you want to resume the training or you download the model checkpoint from somewhere so for example i might have trained the data uh use the model using my own data and then i put the checkpoint somewhere you can download my model checkpoint and then to resume training and you can apply it to other data uh, other object detection for example you train for buildings you can resume training and then train for water detection or that other task so it's change followable Okay, so that's all for this uh, tutorial. I hope you find it useful. I will see you in the next one.